the spine of Volbian, the Discovery, the Sacred North and the Cygnus connection. Unlike the St. Michael line, which targets the Beltane sunrise in the east, the Bellinus line has no solar orientation. Although its trajectory south appears to be angled towards the midday sun on the summer solstice, the exact time between sunrise and sunset, it is a couple of degrees out. However, after consulting David Furlong's work, I soon realised that its orientation may have more of a cosmic significance. Furlong discovered that the St. Michael line was probably surveyed using high points in the landscape towards the setting of a particular star, perhaps using beacon fires. He discovered that it was one star in the constellation of Orion and states, The star in question is Mintaka, which would have reached its extinction point on the alignment, which has an appropriate azimuth of 242 degrees around 2800 BCE. The process is quite simple. Watch on a hilltop position on a clear night for the setting of Mintaka and mark that position. In daylight, the alignment to another hilltop can be marked. Proceed to the next hilltop and repeat the observation, marking the sites en route. I discovered with the help of stellar computer programs such as Skyglobe that the Bellinus line, orientated at 346 degrees, targets the setting of the bright star Deneb in the constellation of Cygnus during the reign of the historical King Bellinus around 500 BC. However, it was during this period that the Iron Age tribes constructed the hill forts along the Bellinus line. Another bright star called Vega in the constellation of Lyra the Harp also seemed significant to the alignment for it leads or escorts Deneb to its setting on the northern horizon. Perhaps as Furlong discovered with the St. Michael line, the ancient geomancers used these bright stars as markers to set out the Bellinus alignment from hilltop to hilltop using the beacon fires. Further celestial influences were revealed at key nodal points on the Bellinus line, many of them on beacon hills or escarpments. More significantly, these sites all have aspects to the northern horizon, which seemed integral to their ritual function. In addition, some of the key hills that highlight the alignment point towards the north-northwest as if to deliberately mark its course. This also occurs on the St. Michael line, with the shape of Burrow Mump and Glastonbury Tor pointing in the direction of the alignment towards Avebury. I soon discovered that, these, that those observing the northern skies at sites on the Bellinus line in the south would have seen Deneb setting into the horizon right up until the Dark Ages. This appears less evident as you move further north along the line because the star gradually becomes circumpolar. circumpolar. Although strategically placed hills and mountains would still give one the illusion of Deneb setting into the horizon. Interestingly, the stars of Cygnus, also known as the Northern Cross, were considered sacred to the early Christians who believed they represented the Calvary Cross or Crux come St. Helena, the Cross of St. Helen. They saw in these stars the embodiment of Christ and Mary, perhaps revering the site into which the cross set. However, it was author Andrew Collins with his groundbreaking book, The Cygnus Mystery, who alerted me to its true significance. He noted that many important prehistoric sites in Britain align in some way to the rising or setting stars of the Cygnus constellation, particularly its brightest star, Deneb. Furthermore, these stars fall within a dark split in the Milky Way caused by dust clouds called the Great Rift or Dark Drift. Dark Rift. The rift extends from Cygnus to Aquila and then broadens out to Sagittarius where it obscures the galactic centre. This unusual feature of the Milky Way was revered by ancient religious cultures around the world who believed it to be representative of of a magical pathway to the heavens or afterlife and rebirth. 
Collins found that many shamanic cultures around the world saw the stars of Cygnus as representing a cosmic bird of first creation and aligned many of these stone monuments and temples to them as if to absorb their influence. Certain European cultures depicted the constellation as a celestial swan flying across the Milky Way. Interesting when you watch movies like Outlaw Kings and um, they're swearing on the swans and stuff like that. And you have swans present when uh, King Edward is knighting his son and all the rest of them under the dragon banner. You know, that instantly springs to mind. North American tribes such as the Blackfoot believed that the sky world was not just a destination for the soul to pass into the afterlife, but also inhabited by sentient beings which could travel to Earth through a portal in the Milky Way or the sky pole. The shamans believed that the sky beings provided them with knowledge from the ancestors in the form of ancient wisdom and advice on how to live a more spiritual life on Earth. Perhaps as they walked north along the well-trodden paths of the Bellinus line between the stone monuments and earthen shrines, the ancient Britons envisioned this celestial swan swooping down before them carrying its brightest star, Deneb. Collins refers to earlier surveys that calculated the main axis of Avebury, which is a line through the centre of its two inner circles, to have an azimuth of 339.2 degrees, which aligns to the setting of Deneb around 6200 BC. In, addi in addition, Callanish on the Isle of Lewis in, Sc in Scotland, with its great northern stone avenue, aligns with the rising of Sadr, lying at the centre of the cross of Cygnus. Many temples around the world also align with this sacred constellation, including the Great Pyramids. Collins, 2006, states that although the world Cygnus was once seen as the entrance and exit to the sky world, making it a candidate for the original location of heaven, which before the rise of Christianity was often seen as existing in the extreme north and accessed via the pole star and north-south meridian line, which splits the heavens in two along its longitudinal zenith. Science, too, has realised the significance of this constellation when, in the 1980s, deep underground particle detectors at many locations around the world simultaneously recorded an unexpected and important discovery. Cosmic powerful rays were found to penetrate 304 metres, or 1,000 feet, of solid rock above the underground facilities. At the time, this was thought to be impossible, but equipment repeatedly picked up, picked up a unique signal from the decaying cosmic particles. The source was identified as coming from Cygnus X3, a binary star within the Cygnus constellation, and these unique cosmic particles were soon dubbed Cygnets, meaning children of the swan. Collins 2006. Interesting as well when you think about words like significance or significant, how it sounds like Cygnus or serious sounds like Sirius. Just something to think about. Uh, anyway, I'll leave it there for the end of part one and go clear my throat.